Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Ron Guerin, speaking to you from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Last August, I had the opportunity to visit with Hans Reitz and his team from the Grameen Creative Lab, and I found the team to be just a high energy, very dedicated, very committed team, and I was really impressed with their vision that's, that business can help others and can help our planet. I found that very contagious, and I, I just think it's a great honor to be able to say a few words to you here at the Global Social Business uh, Summit. And I want to take this opportunity to share with you a very unique and special experience that serves as a cornerstone experience in my life. I want to briefly tell you uh, the story of my first flight into space and how I believe that that experience has shaped and focused my commitment to our future. On May 30th of 2008, I had the great privilege of flying on board the Space Shuttle Discovery on the STS-124 mission to the International Space Station. The day of launch started out with us getting into our spacesuits and then making the eight kilometer ride to the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After strapping into the Space Shuttle Discovery, we got ready to launch and in this video, you'll see both the crew during the launch and hear what we're saying to each other. Six seconds, main engine starts. Three coming up. Three, two, three to hundred. Hang on. Booster ignition. Auto two. Auto two. Discovery. Auto auto. Mate Kudasai. I see three at one oh four. I see a command and a roll. Houston Discovery roll program. I am LVLH. LVLH. Roger roll, Discovery. Roger roll, Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made rising star. So, what a view at the side. All right, good digitals. Thank you. Point one, it's coming up at 1.2. All right, that's one. All right, we're two. Two, three, coming up. Hang on. Three, one, four. Spectacle. All right, everything was looking good. There's 90 seconds. Uh, thank right. you. 100,000 feet. You see less than 50. It's 103, 103. Hello. A little bit. Hey, a little bit of convert. Slowing down. That's a good control. Do a big high five. 90 seconds to meet, go. All right. After our eight and a half minute journey to space was complete, we had to accomplish all the maneuvers that are necessary to join up with the International Space Station. And our first view of this amazing orbital complex right as the sun was rising above the horizon was just spectacular. But once we saw the space station for the first time, once we were on orbit, we still had quite a lot to do before we could dock with the space station and enter inside. Once we accomplished everything that needed to be done prior to docking, our commander, Mark Kelly, slowly backed the space shuttle to gently touch and dock with the space station. After all the checks were complete, we were able to open the hatches and join our friends on the other side of the hatch in the International Space Station. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Are you looking for a plumber? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's our lunch break. Come back in 15 minutes. Sergey, how are you? Good. Did you get real quick? Hey, how you doing? During the course of our 14-day mission, my spacewalk partner Mike Fossum and I conducted three spacewalks. All right, boys, it's time to rock and roll. Over the course of the three spacewalks, we were outside in the vacuum of space over 20 hours. On the last of the three spacewalks, I slid my feet under clamps on the end of the large space station robotic arm. With me attached to the end of the arm, the arm was flown through a maneuver called the windshield wiper. And this brought me across a big arc over the top of the space station and back. At the top of this arc, I was 30 meters above the space station with the Earth 350 kilometers below. It was absolutely incredible to see this enormous space station, the most complex structure ever built, built by 16 diverse nations all working together to accomplish this tremendous task. And to see this accomplishment of humanity against the backdrop of the indescribably beautiful Earth was breathtaking. For the first time in our mission, I wasn't just looking down at the Earth, but I was looking at a planet hanging in the blackness of space. 
But as I look down at this indescribably beautiful, fragile oasis, this island that has protected all life from the harshness of space, I couldn't help but to also think of all the inequity that exists on our fragile oasis. I couldn't help but think of the people who don't have clean water to drink, enough food to eat, the social injustice, conflicts, and the poverty that exists. It really was an amazingly stark contrast between the beauty of our planet and the unfortunate realities of life on our planet for many of its inhabitants. This experience reaffirmed a belief that I held long before flying in space, and that is that each and every one of us on this planet has a responsibility to leave it a little better than we found it. My heartfelt thanks to all of you who are truly making the world a better place. Thank you for making that part of the world that you have come in contact with a little better simply because you came in contact with it. And thank you for making life better for those who share this fragile oasis with you. I want to share with you an initiative to use this unique orbital perspective to inspire people to improve life on our planet. Those of us who travel beyond the confines of our Earth appreciate that we have been given a special privilege. We realize how fortunate we are to be included in that very small group of people who have the opportunity to fly in space. Because of this, we also realize that we have a responsibility to share that experience as best we can with everyone who has not been given this opportunity. We have developed a website at FragileOasis.org where one of the main goals is to help others share the wonderful experience of living and working in space and through this experience encourage people and organizations to improve life on our fragile oasis. At present, the live site contains blogs by astronauts training for spaceflight or currently living and working on board the space station. In a few weeks, we are going to launch an online community of people and organizations that are committed to improving life on our planet. The Fragile Oasis community will be established to unite crew members on our spaceship Earth, and that is the spaceship that we are all traveling through the solar system on and that we are all crew members of, and to unite them in the common goal of sharing our humanity and improving our world. The purpose of the community is to inspire, recognize, and to help each other in our collective quest to make life better on our planet. Included in this site will be a section that compares systems on a spacecraft, for example, systems to provide clean water, clean air, food, health, etc., and to tie those to projects doing the same on our spaceship Earth. We will tie these together using a mapping program that's used on the International Space Station and also on the Space Shuttle. Groups, such as those gathered here today, can highlight their projects on, on the Fragile Isis site. The site will provide overviews of your project and links to pictures, videos, and to your project website. This March, I'm scheduled to launch on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for a six-month mission on board the International Space Station. During my six-month mission, whenever possible, I will photograph from space those project sites selected by the Fragile Oasis community. I encourage everyone to follow our progress as we build the site. If it's something you like and something you think could help you or your organizations with your humanitarian goals and objectives, please encourage people to become a part of our Fragile Oasis community. I also want to share with you that on my six-month mission, I'm allowed to take a few books with me. And one of the four books that uh, I'm taking is Creating a World Without Poverty, Social Business, and the Future of Capitalism by Professor Yunus. Uh, I, I chose that book over, over uh, Dr. Yunus's other books, frankly, because that's the only one I haven't read yet. Uh, but in closing, I want to say uh, thank you to Grameen for the, the incredible positive impact that you've made in the lives of millions of people around the world. And, and thank you to everybody here at the Global Social Business Summit uh, for your continued uh, help and, and con your continued contribution to the future of our world. And, I'm, and I can sincerely say that I am very, very optimistic about the possibilities of our future. And I thank you for this opportunity to say a few words to you. Thank you.